You know, like, because what we're talking about, you're saying you were in high school. I, w I was 23. So I was still young and I was already producing my, my, I was, because it's one thing to be an artist, but it's another thing to be produced. You know, like when, I mean, like being on a label, I, I didn't didn't have any labels i was 23 and i was funding all of my project all of my studio all of my masterings printing all the copies and i was all funding this already at that time through my paintings since i'm 17 i'm making my funds and my money with my paintings when i was 19 this is when i stopped working on the south shore of longueuil and i start traveling when i was 19 well, i went to brazil how did you do that I went to Brazil. I was invited to be part. I was painting at Cafe Graffiti. Cafe Graffiti were asked to uh, do a selection of seven Quebecois artists to go represent graffiti at uh, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And they selected me. I was the youngest of the selection. And my employer didn't want to give me my days off, my weeks off. So I quit the job. And uh, I never had a, a work outside of being myself the the owner and and i don't know so, and uh, so you go to brazil at 17 yeah. to paint i was at that time no no at that time i was 19. Okay, 19. at that time i was 19. i was already now. in longueuil for the past two years and then i get selected to go there and uh, i'm 19 i'm going there i come back i don't have work and i start hustling a bit more since I'm 17, I already make side side money with graffiti. But now at 19, I say, okay, it's my full job. Let me make music and make uh, paintings as a full job. And um, yeah, I never stopped. And to me, that in itself speaks uh, louder than the small amount of views that I may get and streaming, you know, because it's in the people, it's in the culture, it's in the intertwining of of our our experience and my generations but i think something i heard you say that was super interesting on the glock party podcast was that there was this realization or something or maybe i'm remembering it in not perfect wording but you kind of realized that you had to make the money to create the art that you want to retain autonomous so in a sense if the music maybe wasn't going to pay you right there had to be things coming in that like kind of just solidified your autonomy in which case the, the the artwork worked out for you for that it's a lot of why i kept my day job because i can kind of do what i want with art because that that's how i pay for it <laughs> like so to me it's like um it's super interesting that you you approach it like that and that you were like able to to kind of make that connection but to just do it off of art entirely is fucking gangster because that's like a level of like I don't know. I guess there's like that. There's a chord to like having a job where there is that stability and you can do a lot. But then I think about your life and a lot of the adventures you got up to, and it's like, nah, maybe there's something more to like the not having a job version of this and figuring out how to actually make the money off of that version of it. <clears throat> I do believe our lives are intersection, and you choose to risk. You choose prudence and risk at different timing. And that's how you get what you get of your investment. Mm. And I chose a lot of time risk. I was all in on my life, you know? So I guess it's a cyclical leap of faith. You are asked, is it really the life you want? You receive a death threat for no reason. People cross your mural and write 187 will kill you, whatever it is. Uh, someone diss you in a battle rap or you don't get chosen for the album you want it to be, whatever it is, man. It, I do believe it's, um, this is what strengthened me. It's just to jump every time. And I heard myself, I made mistakes, but at least I was playing, you know, I was in there involved in publishing, you know, publishing philosophy, publishing, uh, criticism of the world pu publishing uh, alternative knowledge publishing gratitude and good vibes publishing colors and proportions and shapes um so yeah i started early 
it was important for me. That's what I wanted to do in life. So at 19, for me, it was like, I can't take this anymore. I need to produce art seven days a week, not two days a week, seven days a week. So that's it. And I knew at that point I was magnetizing enough attention and I had enough knowledge of my capacity and my talent that I was not scared. I was actually, yes, my, my dream life is starting, you know? And it's also because I came from not having, I came from couch surfing as a, uh, as a teenager, you know? So I didn't have anything. I didn't, I didn't need anything. I could continue to couch surf while I was hustling for my dreams. So I was living the dream life, bro. I was painting out, how much and I was able to make enough money to have free time to just do what I wanted. And then the hustle became now I need to be so strong and famous and known and respected and wanted that people don't want to have an illustrated idea with my skills, but of their idea, but they love my mind so much that now they are paying to have my ideas with my artistic aesthetic as an art piece that they invest money and time to keep and to protect, you know? So that, the, that's what the, beca- the hustle became at that time. 19 years old, 20 years old, I was still painting dolphins and, and f- fake gardens and back, and like back houses to help for the birthday of some, but it was not necessarily all the time invested with my soul and that became to annoy me so at one point i decided to go away from these immediate contract and search for more representative um, opportunities for my soul to be always fully present for my clothing style to be always present for my beard and long hair to be always present for my honesty and faithfulness to be always present like for so these became priorities and as an artist you have a lot of leniency to recreate and to create and to defend your identity well as a pawn or as a someone more into a frame and a box you have to respect that box my box is breaking the box so that's what i have to do all my life to be that person who is counter counter current uh, still trendy, but counter trend, all of these things we need to develop. So to me, it became a research to become this at least once before I die, to be that print of truthfulness and honesty and work and investment and spirit. And I would say what I call uh, godly or what I call uh, the breath of life to kind of choose me as a channel to do a fingerprint of itself uh, in my generation, in my culture, in my community, in my surrounding, in my virtual publication. It's wildly entertaining to listen to you talk, but you also get the sense of, I can be whatever the fuck I want to be every time I hear you go on. Which is...